यार कहाँ पे पढ़ा जाए बाहर जा करके यू मे बी थिंकिंग मे बी आई शुड गो टू द यू एस मे बी कैनेडा नो कैनेडा डजन सीम ग्रेट यू एस इट्स टू मच ऑफ एन एक्सपेंस मे बी आई कैन अफोर्ड दैट वेर डू यू गो नेक्स्ट ऑस्ट्रेलिया ऑस्ट्रेलिया इज नॉट सपोर्ट स्टूडेंट्स डूइंग कोविड एंड इवन नाउ वी सी अटैम्प्ट फ्रॉम बोथ यू के एंड ऑस्ट्रेलिया टू हिंडर स्टूडेंट्स हिंडर दी नंबर ऑफ माइग्रेंट्स कमिंग टू दीज कंट्रीज वेल वन कंट्री दैट्स नॉट बिन इन दी पॉलिटिक्स एंड इज नॉट चेंजिंग रूल्स रैपिडली बी आयरलैंड and let me give you a couple of reasons why ireland may be the right choice for you first ireland is home to some of the top most universities all over the world that means you will get globally recognized education no matter where you go in the world you'll be able to make use of it your degree is not just a piece of paper it's worth a lot more when you get it from a country like ireland on top of that ireland is one of the more affordable countries in the europe It's not the most affordable but at the same time it's one of the more affordable ones. You also have the option of working part time while you are studying and you can do that up to 20 hours per week. You have a genuine mapped out pathway to the PR that means you can become a permanent resident if you want which by the way requires usually between 2 to 5 years of working depending on your exact visa type. And finally there's a genuine pathway to invite your family members with you to Ireland so you won't have to worry about them as well. Now with all these perks if you are thinking about which exact locations would be the best to study in Ireland here are a couple of options the number one place would be Dublin where there's university like Trinity College Dublin and University College Dublin best of the best in the whole of Ireland and they're ranked well on a worldwide scale as well some other locations would be Cork which has a great university such as the University of the Cork Limerick for University of Limerick and Galway for NUI Galway again very popular university let's talk about the intakes number one the biggest intake of all is very similar to what US does what Canada does what most of Europe is doing so the biggest one is fall intake which is also called as the September intake this is like i said the biggest intake and applications for this intake are usually between December to May but if you are applying to the top most universities the best time to apply would be now some around december jan feb max packs because the top universities their deadlines go away around this time after that what's left is not so good universities the second biggest intake is spring january intake and if you apply between july to october this would be a good time and you can go in january itself of the next year now you may be wondering yes what kind of courses would be the best to study in a country like ireland well here's the top 5 courses on my list so they would range from data science computer science business analytics then any course in medicine or any course in finance these would be hands down the best courses to study in ireland even in terms of return on investment when you're looking for jobs later on now i understand that studying is costly right and studying overseas is costlier so what kind of expenses do you expect to pay if you're studying in ireland well here's a slick table for you to explain the same So a bachelor student can expect to pay somewhere between 9000 to 25000 euros per annum whereas a master student will pay somewhere between 9500 to 30000 euros per annum again the range is pretty big it depends on the exact university you go to and of course if you go for a phd program personally i have never sent even a single applicant who has not gotten full funding from the university so you should not be paying tuition if you're going for a phd because otherwise it's not a phd Like I said fee and deadlines vary based on the exact university you're going to so for the exact numbers you can take a look at our website biomgrad.com where each and every university's exact term the deadlines the tuitions all these details will be available to you for free Let's talk about the language tests now Ireland is of course an English speaking country that means you're going to have to prove that you can read listen speak and write in English to be able to study there and the best way to do that would be to take an english language test which will be a requirement by the university for most of you guys the best test for ireland would be the ielts the toefl and the pte in that order remember that on my channel itself you will have prep plans and crash courses for all these tests so you can actually go ahead take a look at them and you will be able to ace these tests in the best possible manner let's talk about the application process how do you actually go ahead apply to some of these universities The first process is to shortlist the universities and this is where most students make the mistake. They go for the wrong universities, they apply at the wrong timings. These things happen because of which they don't get the kind of output that they're looking for. So make sure that you're shortlisting them properly and if you're not able to do that, WhatsApp me for help. We have the shortlisting support and we've done it for thousands of students over the years, so we'll be able to help you on that front. The second thing is for you to meet the minimum requirements that every university will put up. 
these requirements would pertain to your CGP or percentage being above a higher level if you've done your bachelor's or high school before. There may be some standardized tests like the GRE, GMAT or, or TOEFL, IELTS, PTE. And of course, you'll have to submit an SOP. Now, if you need help with your SOP, which basically is your statement of purpose, essentially explaining why you should be selected, you can always reach out to me because we also have Ivy League graduates who can help you with your SOP end to end and we can make sure that it's stellar, it's top of the line and you will be able to get accepted on the basis of that. Of course, you'll also have to submit an online application and pay the application fee for each and every university that you apply to. For some of the universities, we may also have waivers for you so you can reach out to me if you're working with us for the waivers. Now, let's talk about your return on investment. Your return on investment begins when you start to get that post-study work permit, right? Because you don't just directly get a green card, a PR, but you get first is a work permit. So you work your way up. There's two types of work permits. The first one is the Irish General Work Permit. And the second one is the Critical Skills Employment Permit. If you would want to know whether you fall in the Critical Skills list, you can take a look at all the fields on the Critical Skills list in this PDF. I'm gonna be sending you the link. It's already in the description, so you can take a look from there. However, it's important to talk about the differences between these work permits. So let's begin. The duration of these work permits, both of them, is two years. So there's no difference over there. However, for the general work permit, you need to pass a labor market needs test, which is not required if you're going for the critical skills employment work permit. The PR eligibility would be faster in case of you falling into the critical skills, and that would only take about two years for you to apply for. And if you want to apply for PR in the general work permit stream, then you need to wait five years and you need to work for five years in Ireland. Both of these work permits, by the way, are extendable, but it's easier to extend the critical skills work permit. And if you have the critical skills work permit, your dependents can come immediately to you. They can accompany you immediately. However, if you do not have that, and if you have the general work permit, your dependents will need to wait 12 months to come to Ireland and live with you. Now, what I was curious about was what kind of salaries can you expect after spending this amount and you, know, you get the work permit and everything? Well, here's an average of those that I could find. So a software developer or data scientist makes somewhere around 65,000 euros annually on an average. A dentist would make somewhere around $98,000 on average. And an accountant would make somewhere around 55,000 euros. Remember that salaries that I've provided you here are industry averages. So it would depend on the amount of experience you have. It would depend on exactly which location, which area you are working in. So please take all of those into consideration. If you have questions, you can reach out to me on my WhatsApp. The link is in the description. My number is in the description. And you also have Instagram where you can reach out to me where I have a lot more content about studying overseas, living overseas, getting internships, working overseas. Everything is covered. So make sure you follow me there. Subscribe to the channel for more such videos. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Goodbye and take care until next time.